let's take a look at the structures of Earth. Okay, so we start with the crust, the mantle, and the core. So you need to be generally familiar with each of these. So the crust ranges from 5 to 70 kilometers in depth and is the outermost layer. So that's the important part there. It's the outermost layer. The thin parts of the crust are oceanic crust, which underlie the ocean basins and are composed of dense iron, magnesium, silicate, igneous rocks like basalt. The thicker crust is called continental crust, which is less dense and composed of sodium, potassium, aluminum, silicate rocks like granite. The important takeaway here is that the crust is the outermost layer. Earth's mantle extends to a depth of almost 2,900 kilometers, making it the thickest layer on Earth. The mantle is divided into an upper and lower mantle. The upper and lower mantle are separated by the transition zone. The mantle is composed of silicate rocks that are rich in iron and magnesium relative to the overlying crust. As there is intense and increasing pressure as one travels deeper into the mantle, the lower part of the mantle flows less easily than does the upper mantle. The lower mantle is more solid than the upper mantle. Uh, seismic measurements have shown that the core is divided into two parts. There's a solid inner core and a liquid outer core. In terms of plate tectonics, the lithosphere, which is the rigid outermost shell of a planet, which means it's made up of the crust and the upper mantle, is broken into tectonic plates. The Earth's lithosphere is composed of seven or eight major plates, depending on how they are defined, and many minor plates. Where the plates meet, their relative motion determines the type of boundary. Convergent, divergent, or transform. So we'll go over those in a second here. Earthquakes, volcanic activity, mountain building, in oceanic trench formation occur along these plate boundaries or faults. So a divergent boundary occurs when two tectonic plates move away from each other. Along these boundaries, lava spews from long fissures and geysers spurt superheated water. Frequent earthquakes strike along the rift. Beneath the rift, magma, which is molten rock, rises from the mantle. It oozes up into the gap and hardens into solid rock, forming new crust on the torn edges of the plates. Magma from the mantle solidifies into basalt, a dark, dense rock that underlies the ocean floor. Thus, at divergent boundaries, oceanic crust made of basalt is created. Okay, so the main point there, what we just said, was that a divergent boundary occurs when two tectonic plates move away from each other. That's the thing that you absolutely have to know. Um, alternately, when two plates come together, it is known as a convergent boundary. The impact of the two colliding plates buckles the edge of one or both plates up into a rugged mountain range and sometimes bends the other down into a deep seafloor trench. A chain of volcanoes often forms parallel to the boundary, to the mountain range, and to the trench. Powerful earthquakes shake a wide area on both sides of the boundary. If one of the colliding plates is topped with oceanic crust, it is forced down into the mantle where it begins to melt. Magma rises into and through the other plate, solidifying into new crust. Magma formed from melting plates solidifies into granite, a light-colored, low-density rock that makes up the continents. Thus, at convergent boundaries, continental crust made of granite is created and oceanic crust is destroyed. All right, so that was a lot, but what we need to know here is convergent boundary occurs when two plates move towards each other. Remembering again, divergent boundary occurs when two plates move away from each other. Okay, so we've got one more to look at. When two plates are sliding past each other, we get a transform plate boundary. Natural or human-made structures that cross a transform boundary are offset, split into pieces, and carried in opposite directions. 
Rocks that line the boundary are pulverized as the plates grind along, creating a linear fault valley or undersea canyon. As the plates alternately jam and jump against each other, earthquakes rattle through a wide boundary zone. In contrast to convergent and divergent boundaries, no magma is formed. Thus, crust is cracked and broken at transport margins, but is not created or destroyed. All right. So remembering transform boundary is when two plates slide past each other. All right, let's take a look at the mid-ocean ridge. A mid-ocean ridge is an underwater mountain system formed by plate tectonics. It consists of various mountains linked in chains, typically having a valley known as a rift running along its spine. This type of oceanic mountain bridge is characteristic of what is known as an oceanic spreading center, which is responsible for seafloor spreading. The production of new seafloor results from mantle upwelling in response to plate spreading. This upwelling material eventually melts. The melt rises as magma at a weakness in the oceanic crust and emerges as lava, creating new crust once it cools. A mid-ocean ridge marks the boundary between two tectonic plates and consequently is a divergent plate boundary. And lastly, with volcanoes, um, Earth's volcanoes occur because its crust is broken into 17 major rigid tectonic plates that float on a hotter, softer layer in its mantle. Therefore, on Earth, volcanoes are generally found where tectonic plates are either diverging or converging, and most are found underwater. As an example, a mid-oceanic ridge, such as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, has volcanoes caused by divergent tectonic plates, but on the other hand, the Pacific Ring of Fire has volcanoes caused by convergent tectonic plates. So both are possible.